Now, the reason that we're doing all of this is that ultimately we want to be able to connect doodads like this screen and this temperature sensor and be able to either get readings or output and for, you know, get information in or get put information out from our blue pill. And in order to do that, we need to connect to these peripheral pins. Now the peripheral pins, uh, we can put jumpers in there, but they're not, they're not going to stick very well. Well, I mean, I guess they're not that bad, but they're, they're fidgety enough as it is. And to have a loose connection like that, it's not going to work very well. And you run the risk of accidentally touching something where it doesn't belong, like doing something like this that could potentially short out the microprocessor and, and ruin it. You know, if you were to touch across a trace and another trace or something like that, you could short it out, you could ruin it. So we don't want to have these, these dangly do's hanging off there. And that's where the pin rail comes in. Now, uh, whether you're using a breadboard, these are called breadboards. This is a solderless breadboard. And then here are some examples of soldered breadboards. And the main difference is that the solderless breadboard, in theory, we can easily stick um, the pins in. And if we could easily stick the pins in there and we could easily stick the other ends uh, onto our little blue pill, then we get it wired up and we can start working on the software. Most things in the microcontroller world, especially the hobbyist world, they're kind of a standard size. So you'll notice these rails, they'll actually all fit in. So what we're gonna do is, let me see if I've got one that's already put together here. So this one already has the pin rails on and it actually fits quite nicely. Just boop. Oh, I gotta push a little bit to get it in. There we go. Boom. So it fits quite nicely right on the board without any soldering. And now some of those connections might be finicky still, but uh, for the most part, it's probably gonna work. It's, it's in there pretty firm and tight. There's two directions. There's the power rails run the full length, and then each one of the uh, columns, so to speak, run out like this. So they're numbered, let's reposition it, one, two, three, four, da, 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 right? So what we want to be able to do is to say, plug in some sensor. Say that sensor was supposed to connect to um, A8 and A9. You know, ideally I'd be able to plug this into the board right there. And now, because these go this way, up and down when I'm, well, when I'm holding it sideways, otherwise they go sideways when I'm holding it up and down. But because they're all connected this way, A8 is now connected to red, A9 is now connected to yellow, which means I could connect some sensor onto the end of this. So that's our goal is to be able to get this thing to snap in place. So in order to do that, I'm gonna to have to teach you a little bit of soldering. Here's the soldering 101 that you need to know for the bare minimum of just getting these, these uh, pin rails soldered. First of all, I recommend that you have a piece of cardboard. You don't want to, probably one bigger than this, but you don't want to uh, burn your furniture, your desk, you don't want to burn yourself. So it's good that um, hopefully your iron came with a stand. You want to have a sponge with some water um, or, you know, really a paper towel with a little bit of water will do fine. The purpose of this is actually just kind of to, to shock the solder off the iron. So I'm just going to cut this back into the beginning for you. Um, before you start soldering, you want to make sure that you've got your biggest tip on your iron, uh, your bevel tip, typically. Uh, you do not want to use a conical tip or a cone-shaped tip, never ever. Screwdriver tip is good, meaning a tip that kind of looks like a screwdriver. Bevel tip is best. Um, cupped bevel tip is the very, very best. But um, yeah, you want to use big. It, even though you're working on stuff that's small, it's, it's kind of like too much is just enough uh, because what you're really trying to do is transfer heat. And you want to do that as quickly and efficiently as possible. Now I have a nice uh, $100 soldering iron, but I'm not going to use that because I don't think that you have that. And if you've got a good one, you want to set it to about 350 degrees Celsius. If you got one of these $10 ones, you want to start at the lowest temperature and work your way up. These things are notorious for being super hot, even though they don't say it. So it might say that it's only 200 degrees Celsius. It might actually be closer to 400 because the temperature gauge has nothing to do with what temperature it is. I'm going to plug this in and this is going to heat up very quickly 
to a temperature that it can easily uh, catch things on fire. So we want to be safe and careful about this. You might not be able to see this, but this is already fuming. So you want to take a good breath into the side and then you're going to hold your breath. And while you're using the soldering iron, you just gently blow out and that's going to keep the smoke out of your eyes. You don't have to worry about lead getting into your lungs. Lead does not vaporize at low temperatures like 400 degrees Celsius. Um, what is, what's going to be vaporizing is basically tree sap. So it's called uh, rosin. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to wet the tip here. And one of the things that you need to know about soldering is that you, you want to be very wasteful. That's, that's part of the, the objective. So I'm going to go ahead and just load this up with plenty of solder. Oh, this has been in its case for a while, so it's not, uh, it's not taking the soldery very well. That's fine. Yeah, it's doing a really bad job. It's not taking the solder very well at all. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean this off. Uh, be careful not to touch the solder balls. They are very, very hot. So that's just rust that's coming off there. And that's perfectly fine. So tip won't wet, no big deal. Just kind of shock the solder off. It also can help to get out your flux. Now you may have dry flux. It's basically solid rosin, or you might have some jelly-like flux, which is what I'm getting out here. If I can get it out. Well, now let me get this open. Okay, so... Um, if you have the, uh, the hard flux, you just kind of rub it on like a crayon, but hopefully you've got the jelly flux anyway. So I'm just going to get some jelly flux on here and I'm going to wet my tip and we want to get the tip to where it, it'll take silver on it. So I'm putting way too much on there just so I can clean it off. The whole purpose of me wetting it is actually just to clean it off. So now we have a nice silver tip. You cannot get work done if your tip is not tinned. Now it's okay that the, the only the very tip of the tip is tinned, that's fine. All right, now we need to get the rails onto this thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I think is the best way to solder this. I'm gonna take this and just line it up and put this whole pin rail so it slides nicely into place and then right at the corner there that one right above my thumbnail is where i'm going to try to break it so hopefully it's a clean break if not it's all right oh and it is nice clean break whether you have jelly flux or you have solid flux it doesn't matter too much if you got the jelly flux you're just going to stick this in and drag it a little bit and move it around you want to get plenty of flux on there. It's going to look nasty. That's just fine. And then we're going to put it into our little blue pill. And then I'm going to set that on there for a second. If you've got the hard kind, you're just going to rub it across. Uh, you probably rub that, you know, it's like a, like a, a block of chalk almost. You just rub across the pens, get it on there. So I'm going to do this one again. Oops. There we are. Plenty of flux. So what flux does is it kind of, it's kind of like a cleaner. It's, it's actually just pine sap, but when it reacts with metal, it causes like dirt and stuff to go away from the metal. It's like a, almost the same way soap does with water, flux does with, with metal. It just causes things to, to kind of be repelled. I'm going to leave it right there. I don't want to push it down because I don't want too much heat transferring. So now we've got our soldering iron. I need to make sure the tip is sparkling clean. Careful not to touch the spiral thing there, because that's hot as I move this around. All right, so I'm going to go over to my sponge, and I'm going to clean this off. Whoops, you can't see that. Let me move that over a little bit. So I'm just kind of, kind of rolling and dragging is kind of what I'm doing there. I'm trying to get all of the, uh, the solder off if I can, because I'm about to put more solder back on. So what we want to do is get just extra flux. You can never have too much flux. You always want to go heavy on the flux, um, in most cases anyway. And then I'm going to go ahead and just, this is clean solder. I'm going to put on here. Whoops, let me, I don't want to drop any solder on the breadboard. It'll melt it. And then I'm immediately just going to put it on the sponge again and wipe it off. Because we just want to <coughs> make sure that this is extra clean. Now again, with the fumes, you don't have to worry about breathing in lead or anything. That's not 
That's not going to happen. None of the lead is being vaporized. It's just basically tree sap is what you're breathing in, which still is not good for your lungs, so you want to blow it away from you when you can. Um, but it's it's not, uh, you're not breathing in lead. That's the thing I just want to make sure you're aware. Okay. Uh, that's about as clean as I'm going to get it. That's fine. I'm going to put um, pretty much too much solder on this. 